everybody. I hope everybody's doing well this this fine summer day, and everything is uh, is working for for everybody. Uh, real quick, I'd like to introduce myself. I work with Dynamic Computer Corporation, and we do a whole bunch of IT component oriented stuff. And and the tall, dark, and handsome are not can't even really tell. The guy here is, is Bernie Meyer. He's with uh, Viata. It's a brocade, brocade company. Uh, say hello uh, there. Oh, one second there. I need to unmute you now. <laughs> I had you. I have you muted. Go ahead, Bernie. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Excellent. Very good. And uh, because you didn't supply me with a headshot, so I couldn't do that. So, well, welcome everybody. A little bit about Dynamic Computer Corporation. And we were founded in 1979. We have a whole bunch of years of experience in the in the uh, in the IT marketplace. A lot of you know who we are already, but I figure there's a few that don't. And our biggest thing that you'll find about us is that we uh, we started out in equipment, but now we're branching out into other areas of the federal space and virtualization and other engineering components. We are vendor agnostic, which means that we don't really care who you buy from. We just want to make sure that we we wind up uh, developing the best solution for you. And a lot of times we get started into in, in your agencies by providing oddball stuff and weirdware. So a lot of you know that as well. And we are virtualization experts, and most of our business is repeat business, which is why we have uh, we have developed the history that we have in the marketplace. The objective of this webinar is to assist you guys in understanding the virtual and cloud environment. There's a lot of things that are coming down on your head uh, with virtualization and cloud, and some of this th these things can be confusing and hard to really get your hands around. It's hard to get your hands around a cloud, right? So we like to dialogue on best practices, and that's why we pull folks in like Bernie. We tell you what to look for. We'll give you some pros and cons. Most importantly, we'll help keep you out of hot water, and we'll get selfish for a minute, and we'll talk about our uh, vehicle options that you can utilize, and we'll provide links to resources. As we go through this, you're going to be seeing and hearing things about, uh, about initiatives, about uh, memorandums that are released by OMB and the President of the United States will be providing you with those links and resources as well. Real quick, from a housekeeping standpoint, on the right side of your screen, you have the ability to enter your audio pin so that we can unmute you and have dialogue. We'd love to do that. Uh, we have some questions already, but you're welcome to, to type in a couple of questions. In the on the right hand side, you can ask questions. You can chat. We'll we'll check these throughout the presentation, and we'll and we'll create this dialogue if we can. So, uh, but you have to put your audio pin in if you're going to be unmuted. And here's what you asked for when we put this out there. This this briefing would be the best if it was brief. That's the first thing. Uh, second is not too technical, and the information relates to real world examples. And this is one of the things that we love to do is to associate things that you see every day within the cloud environment, so you know what it is. A lot of the procurement folks, uh, experts in procurement, but not necessarily experts in IT, and we love to be able to help with that. So the things that that you asked for also is getting help with is locating calls for services, meeting some of the initiatives because you have some of these things coming down on your head, and um, and and. Kirk is beyond help, so I can't. I don't know if we can help you, Kirk, but uh, definitely good to have you all here. How does this? What, what are we all talking about here with this whole this whole thing? It revolves around the Cloud First Initiative, and that it was birthed from the Executive Order thirteen five fourteen, and that gave us a whole vision for cloud and virtualization. And the CIO Council got behind it, and they and as you probably have heard already, there's. There's a there's something called FedRAMP, which is a GSA run initiative, and it enables the the testing as well as the the uh, the uh, operation of the initial operation of a cloud. And there's other things that you're hearing now with mobility and bring your own device. BYOD is huge out in the federal space. Uh, cloud terms like uh, PaaS, platform as a service, uh, SaaS software as a service, infrastructure as a service, all those things are, are pieces that are subcomponents of this virtualization as a platform. So the other piece that, that you hear now is shared resources, being able to take these pieces and, and assemble them so we're not just running uh, servers in every, app, in, in every office, being able to pull this, share the resources, 
This results in cost savings. It also applies to your green initiatives and your leads credits, if you would. Uh, and you have other things with cybersecurity in February 2013 and open data in, in May 2013. And there's other pieces that are applying themselves as we speak, as these, these pieces come together. A lot of this revolves around F. DCCI, which is the Federal Data Center Consolidation Initiative, and that is to increase the virtualization of distributed systems so that your utilization is not happening, multi, you know, the, the replication of, of your equipment and the replication of your software, it, to adopt a cloud-based infrastructure for highly variable demand, system demands. And this gives you the ability to scale up and down and improves the, the energy efficiency of the remaining data center. So whatever's left that you can't take to the cloud. It's not everything you can take to the cloud or you, and not everything that you can virtualize. So there's certain things that are going to still be assembled within your operational data centers, but because you're peeling off these other ancillary things and you can place these in other places, it gives the ability for you to uh, have higher efficiencies there and it reduces the duplication of efforts all the way across the board. And that's why there's such an initiative here. And this is pretty aggressive. OPM's five-year goals is to reduce the total data center floor space by 40%. So you can see that we're driving in, the, in this direction. And we have, we have the backing of the CIO. In fact, we'll talk about um, uh, Van Rogel in a minute. But uh, improve the power usage by 20% and decrease the total energy use for, for IT at 60%. Again, aggressive goals. And the physical servers, this is the big one, decrease the number of physical servers by 80%. So this is happening all the way across, and it's reinforced by, by the budget. So real quick, high-level view, what virtualization is and some of the benefits, and we'll give you some examples of how they work. Now, when you think about virtualization, it's, it's a device that, that acts like and looks like your local machine. We're seeing a lot of this with your, you know, your, your mobile devices as well, where you can access things and it looks almost just like what you use on your PC. Same thing here with your PC. Each virtual device is self-contained and it's protected from other virtual devices. So your information may be up there in the cloud, but it's isolated so that it's protected. And they appear to you as if they're running right on your, your box that you're used to running every day on your laptop or on your, your desktop. Now, there's different types of virtualization. It runs the gamut. We have hardware and desktop and software, memory, data, network, and storage. All these pieces can be virtualized. And today, and we've concentrated on some of these in the past, and we kind of highlight different ones. Today, we're going to be talking about specifically hardware and the network and, and replacement of that hardware. So we'll be talking about that some. So, the virtualization examples that you have here, if you, uh, when, you're, when you're working at your desktop, you're familiar, most folks are familiar with Microsoft Office. They have access to email. They have access to potentially a database or some other entry, order entry system or something like that to, that they are running on their machine right now. Well, what happens if this machine goes away? Well, the fact is that you can still gain access to this from any other machine that's authorized to be able to gain access to that. And you can still continue your work. It's all, it never goes away, and it continues to run. It also enables us to be able to work from home, to telework, and to be able to work from other remote locations, provided that we have the ability to access that and we have the proper credentials. So we have the ability to do that. And we have access even to some of our files that we, you know, just like you're saving it on your, on your computer, they can be saved virtually. It acts and looks like your desktop or your laptop. And it is safe and secure because of the tunnels that are built. So some of the benefits that you see and the reasons why we're going there, it reduces the physical footprint of your IT infrastructure. And it consolidates all these devices so that you can use these resources and maximize the usage of these resources. It's, it's centrally managed, and it saves power and money. It works with any proved device. So any device that, that's allowed by your, fo your IT folks to be able to access that, and this is where we get to some of that BYOD uh, kind of thing. And it's great to be able to, to get away from being locked down to a, a physical location. Here's some examples that we use every day. So folks like Amazon.com, a lot of people are using it. You're not you're not physically going into a place, and you can sell and you can buy from there, and 
and your information is stored in places and, and it can be accessed from anywhere in the world. Online banking is another example. iTunes, Netflix, you're, you're watching things virtually where you're not actually physically having to go to Blockbuster anymore. You don't have, you, it's never resident on your computer. You can download in some instances, but in most instances, these are actually being run and being, being fed to you from, from a remote location. All you need is connectivity in order to be able to access this. And the beautiful thing is, is when, instead of having to do machine updates and reboots and all those, everything is all handled for you outside uh, of that environment. You don't have to worry about your online banking, whether or not uh, the, they're up to date, because they're taking care of that, the updates for you. And again, any supported device with appropriate credentials can get there. I had the opportunity to, start to talk with uh, Steve Van Rokel a couple weeks ago at an event, and we we got some time, and the whole thing that I found was really incredible. He said, look, what we're doing is we're cutting IT budgets by 10%, and, but immediately we're going back and we're saying, here's 5% for, re, for instituting this new technology. So if you are implementing this new technology, and it's, he, the, the objective is to drive to the cloud, not to keep doing things and getting, uh, getting less for more money, we're we're talking about peeling things back and and getting more for less money. So there there's definitely a, a a heavy direction here that is reinforced from the top down to drive to the cloud and uh, coming up with some some uh, some BYOD, some real real life BYOD thing. Cybersecurity is huge. Continuous monitoring, centrally managed, and giving headquarters oversight over these things. And every one of these is, is what it, is enabled by cloud and virtualization. And there's 13 billion dedicated to cybersecurity and other components there. We have the ability to, uh, to get people where they want, because that's one of the biggest concerns is the security side, but we have the ability to be able to protect that and prevent the wrong people from getting what they want. And, and that's included in a recent um, executive order. So I wanted to make sure you knew about that. And today we have with us Bernie. He's, he's with us and he's with, uh, he's with uh, Viata. And what I like about about Viata is, is they operate a little bit differently than what you would normally consider in, in the marketplace. And we always like to reach out to folks with expertise and make sure that, that they can get they can get a, give you an idea of how things are operating how in the marketplace. So hello, say hello again, Bernie, and I'm going to turn it over to you, but you just tell me when you want me to advance. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, Bernie Meyer. Uh, I'm business development sales uh, across all of the U.S. government. Uh, about, about 20 years experience selling to the federal government in uh, uh, a lot of different product technologies and uh, various disruptive technologies. So a disruptive technology is a, a technology that changes the whole paradigm of, uh, of existing and legacy and, and, and moves uh, the thought process to a new a new way of thinking about doing uh, what we do today, and I'm focused on uh, Viata, and uh, we are a silicon-based uh, company, Silicon Valley, started in 2006 with the uh, with the idea of building a software router <clears throat> and changing the way that networks are constructed, designed, conceived, and thought of, and operated as well and, and sustained. So uh, in that regard, <clears throat> uh, Viata is a well-known company uh, from the open, we started as an open source community uh, project and uh, so we're, we're widely known in that community. Uh, a lot of people have downloaded our product. So I want to talk a little bit about this uh, whole virtual machine concept. <clears throat> The initial virtualization was with servers <clears throat> and storage, the compute part, the storage part, uh, and the network uh, was not virtualized and uh, until we developed this software router, uh, which runs like an application. So what we can do now is uh, we have three functions, a router, a firewall, a VPN, and it acts as an application that sits on uh, uh, a virtual machine, which is uh, represented in a 
away in a cluster server, uh, and those that server is divided up into physical machines in one chassis, and on that physical machine we run various virtual machines, and then on top of that virtual machine we put an application in, in its own operating system. So that's basically uh, what Beata is doing. We have built a router. Uh, it sits in a virtual machine. Uh, it's hypervisor agnostic, so that middle area there where we talk about VMware, Zen, KVM, Hyper-V, uh, those are hypervisors. In other words, that's the layer that goes onto the bare metal and presents to the uh, application the ability to represent a virtual machine in an application. And that virtual machine has access to all the physical hardware resources that are available in that server as well as uh, any network interfaces, any I.O. interfaces. So basically, uh, that application uh, runs and has no, no, no idea that uh, it's running in a virtual uh, encapsulation. The other aspect uh, that's changing the way networks uh, are constructed and designed and operated is they're moving to what we call standard standards-based protocols, and that's that's there's an organiza international organization called the ISO, International Standards Organization, that promulgates the standards, and uh, Beata is committed to only running standards-based protocols. What that means is uh, greater interoper interoperability. Uh, no, <clears throat> no vendor lock in to some proprietary protocol that you're running on your network and you can only go to that vendor when you want to do an upgrade. The other aspect of Viata is we have now changed networking from a hardware-based model to a software-based model. So underlying what we're, we operate on is uh, Intel x86 architecture, which is a as you're well aware, you've got many suppliers. You've got Dell, HP, IBM, others. Uh, even the AMD-based servers are all x86-based. So you have maximum competition on the hardware side, uh, and you bring uh, a Beata application, and we, we run on any one of those x86 architectures. Next slide. <clears throat> So just just a uh, real brief. Uh, uh, we are part of the Amazon uh, uh, GovCloud offering. Uh, we're in their marketplace, so uh, we can extend and overlay networks uh, to a customer's need. Uh, when you need to have a VPN firewall, when you need to have separation uh, of your agency's data from somebody else's, some other agency's data or a specific application that's sensitive that needs to have its own VPN and firewall, uh, as well as a router functionality, uh, we provide that separation capability. So suffice it to say, all the major public cloud uh, providers like Rackspace, Amazon, uh, Intuit, uh, et cetera, uh, use uh, Viata as a overlay network component for their customers. And I'll talk later a little bit about some of the uh, government customers that we already have. So uh, this is an example of uh, how uh, we facilitate operation in a data center. Uh, data centers, as, as we discussed, are being consolidated. People like uh, U.S. Postal Service have uh, migrated and consolidated all of their data centers down to one single data center that runs out of uh, Egan, Minnesota. And if you look under the under the covers, there's uh, <clears throat> uh, there's uh, the concept that we that we had before virtualization of uh, today's uh, three tier uh, application delivery, where you have a database server, an application server, and a web server. Uh, we combine all all of those physical servers onto one server and run the, the database, the application, and the web. As, as applications, as in, inside virtual machines. So this is all about consolidation and miniaturization. Where Viata fits in is we are, provide that router functionality on the database server and the app server and the web server. 
uh, because we're a PC software. So we occupy uh, a virtual machine to ourselves in each one of those environments. And uh, we provide all the uh, necessary functionality as the highlights uh, list depicts, firewall, NAT, NAT is network address translation. That's so when you uh, uh, you basically a network address translation uh, gives you a unique IP address on the user side, but when you go out over the network, it's a, it's a, it's a combined address, and uh, therefore people have uh, don't have the ability to get inside what what you're transmitting. Safe failover. Uh, uh, configuration sync, IPsec. IPsec is the uh, the encryption uh, standard encryption algorithm for encrypting traffic when you go over a wide area uh, distance. Next slide. Uh, you want to build that out? Sure. I love this. I love this slide. This is good. So. Uh, so what is a public cloud? A public cloud is like, uh, in the government sense, uh, FedRAMP, GSA program, certifies public cloud service providers as uh, government ready. And in that space, you have Amazon, what's called Amazon Gov Cloud. Uh, it's part of their Amazon Web Services and uh, Elastic Cloud offering, specialized and focused on Gov Cloud or government requirements. Uh, and in that model, they have the ability to uh, deploy networking services, and underneath that uh, is the ability to get your access to Viata as your networking services provider. And it's kind of interesting, they pay, you pay for that uh, if the GovCloud offers it, I, it certainly offices in the public space, web services, Amazon Web Services. You can buy uh, networking services by the hour. Uh, you, you can uh, stand it up. You can tear it down. And now you have the same problem I do. <laughs> uh, well, while you dealing with that. that, one of the things I love most about this, Bernie, is is that the scalable components. Everything in the in the, in this is a pay as you go kind of pricing model and it, it enables you to scale up and scale down. If you need to if you need to ramp up for a particular project, you have the ability to expand that as big as you need for as as fast and it's fast to provision. You can provision it quickly and then you can pull it right back down and then you you, you pay for it for a, a time and then you uh and then you don't have to pay for it at all after you, you're done. It's, it's basically uh, like a utility model, like buying electricity, for example. Uh, and as the, as the graph, graphics show there, these services are transparent to the user. They don't know where they're coming from. So Amazon, for example, has a, a service center in North Carolina. It has in the Netherlands. It, it, they have these, these resources deployed around the world. And basically, what Viata does is, is provide the ability when, when you need to do what we call cloud bridging, when you've got an application running on one cloud and you need that application to uh, talk to another cloud, you deploy Viata and we do uh, what's called level two cloud bridging. So those clouds can talk over what's called VPN, which is your virtual private network, it's your 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 bandwidth, your method of communication to the other to the other uh, set of resources, which could be deployed anywhere in the world. Uh, and that VPN capability, along with the firewall capability, gives you multi-agency separation. So my agency's data is not being seen or touched by any other agent. You can't get there from here. Okay. And again, it's all it's all uh, standard protocols. Next slide. So the, the, another another uh, aspect of what's going on in the in the telco space, the traditional carrier space, 
they decided that the combination of Intel with various network services applications led to what they call network function virtualization. And this is it. They're driving this right now through a standards organization. And we're in a position to uh, respond to that need by our router being a virtualized uh, application so it meets certain functions that they require. Uh, that same concept is being carried over to the enterprise. And the enterprise encompasses the government uh, IT infrastructure, agency infrastructure, uh, cloud infrastructure, et cetera. So it's virtual machine based. Uh, it leverages what the Intel investment is in Intel technology, as you well are aware. Intel has different classes of performance in its chips, and it continues to move forward with new capability, more cores on the same uh, uh, circuit board footprint. Uh, again, a miniaturization uh, concept. <clears throat> so in uh, the Viata sense, we have a range of services, routing, security, load balancing, et cetera. If that all makes sense. Next slide. So uh, we, always, uh, we always like to talk about competition. Uh, this is an example of, uh, of, of, of how we compete uh, <clears throat> over the last 15 or so years. Cisco has dominated the mind share, the mindset on what is uh, the right way to do networking. Uh, in and of itself, that has limited innovation uh, to a certain extent uh, to, to uh, what uh, Cisco has touted as the next generation of, of networking. With the ad advent of software-defined and software-based networking, it's brought a whole bunch of innovation and new ideas to the table. Uh, we're no longer uh, uh, restricted or constrained by uh, a hardware router, hardware server, et cetera. We now are into a software innovation model similar to downloading the latest patches for your Microsoft Office, uh, Windows, uh, etc. Once you adopt the software model for networking, we're on to a different paradigm for innovation. So, uh, and as an example, uh, Cisco announced its 1000V a cloud service router. And the reason we talk about Cisco is because they have 70, 80 percent dominance in the networking and uh, network equipment environment. So they're they're a good candidate to show differentiation to. Uh, as you can see, four cores, one core, uh, 15 megabits per second, 500 megabits per second, <clears throat> and that's that's even with an on-tuned Viata. So uh, we're also hypervisor agnostic, so we can run on any hypervisor. Uh, and we're Linux-based, and uh, this RESTful APIs, uh, APIs and application programming interface, it's how you integrate a router with other applications. And uh, REST is the standard in the industry today that's very easy, very uh, light, uh, agile, flexible, et cetera. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, uh, I appreciate that, Bernie. And that, what, what we like to do here is kind of lay out some of the things, that, the, just real life view of what's happening out there and the pros and cons for virtually taking your network into the virtual space. First of all, all the things that we've talked about for meeting the initiatives and all that, that's, that's one thing. But, but moving from a hardware model, and Bernie, you mentioned this before, a hardware model to a software model, and that's what enables that, the, the agility and the flexible nature and the ability to scale up and down and, and, and launch things and, and shrink things as, as, as you need them. And I mean fast. If you talk about you can launch servers, you can launch um, applications, usually you can do this in a matter of, of minutes as opposed to having to go out and buy an entire uh, piece of equipment and provision it and then get it in and have the, the IT staff tied up for for hours on, on provisioning that. So the other piece is the central control so that gives the visibility throughout your organization to whoever needs to be able to manage this. 
and administer it. Uh, and instant access, in Bernie's case, instant access to all the routers that are within that, that network so that they can be managed and, and, uh, and handled by your IT staff all virtually. And it, it, the, the cool thing is for, for folks in procurement, this helps me meet the initiatives for, for cloud computing, for the data center consolidation, um, the cybersecurity components, and also green initiatives. Make sure if you're doing anything in the cloud space is that you start to, you're tying these back into other initiatives so that you're getting the credit for your agency for those two. Obviously, reduced costs are huge right now for being able to do that and the, the capacity of utilization. This is what gives you those reduced costs for, for your utilization and your, your performance and efficiencies, and it, it really does make a big difference. Now, let's talk about some of the things that you have to watch out for. Um, some applications cannot be virtualized, and a lot of that has to deal with, with uh, some of the specifications for the uh, what did you mention earlier there, Bernie, for your? Well, the attributes of the application itself, uh, there could be uh, system performance, uh, throughput performance requirements where the hypervisor cannot drive the uh, input and output of data at the speed required because uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's another uh, bottleneck, you know, to get through the hypervisor. In a, in a physical machine, you don't have that. So some applications are not virtual ready, if you will, until we at least, yeah, uh, at least not a, yet. Drive a hypervisor, drive a hypervisor that that can meet that performance challenge. Exactly, and obviously you're dependent on connectivity. So if you don't have connectivity to uh, good connectivity uh, through your telecom provider or whatever it happens to be from your from your network, you're that that's going to be a problem. Interoperability challenges, and this is where we kind of step in at Dynamic, and because we're we we really enjoy taking these disparate pieces and make them work together. So uh, it, making these these pieces work together. Uh, private versus public cloud may affect your features and and options. Um, you can you can do hosted and non-hosted. You know, you can put it, you can give it away, you can have all of your, your responsibilities at a, at, to a cloud provider, or you can do things internally as well. Um, and you also don't have physical access to the manage that device. Everything is done management-wise, it's done virtually. In most instances, that doesn't matter, but every once in a while, you wind up in a situation where it does. And as far as from a procurement side, and I know a lot of folks here are, are pro, uh, the procurement professionals that are responsible for doing this. And I just want to encourage you to not rush through the process because you can, you can get yourself into some trouble. You want to engage your IT security early so that they're running in parallel with the development. You don't want to get to the end of the project and say, oh, by the way, uh, we have to check to make sure that this is, is going to be uh, secure. And a lot of times you can't fill those holes after, the, after it's already provisioned. Uh, follow the FedRAMP guidelines. There's there's uh, 295 different pieces that are uh, components of, of FedRAMP uh, that create the baseline for what is acceptable for cloud and and the components that run on a cloud. So that's not all that you need when you're building your cloud, but it, it gives you at least the baseline and it gives you your um, your interim ability to operate. So authority to operate. Uh, use the highest available standards. Be careful about proprietary technology. And I think, and, and uh, Bernie was kind of being nice uh, with some of the competitive comp pieces that he's up against. But a lot of the things that he's up against, he's battling proprietary technology. And what this does is it restricts the agencies from being able to expand. It restricts them to, from being able to, to, um, to operate. And they're tied into this technology oftentimes for years and then it takes an equipment refresh. This is going to change the way that the IT layout works. So being able to uh, ramp these things up and ramp them down, it is definitely, um, it, it's definitely to watch. Just be careful about, about those proprietary technologies that are out there. And verify the vendor claims. Don't just listen to Bernie. Look at the T's and C's and make sure that all the pieces are in place and that if Bernie says, hey, this is going to do this, make sure you verify those vendor claims with historical uh, folks that have already done it in the federal space. Uh, get service level agreements with teeth and look for the, while you're looking for the lowest 
total cost of ownership. And this is really, it, it's not best price. I, a lot of folks know this already, and I'm not saying anything you don't already know, but uh, certainly look for the best value as opposed to le the lowest price, because very rarely do you find that uh, the lowest price is also the lowest really total cost of ownership. So the other thing is protect your data, protect your agency, and that'll keep you out of hot water. And those are the kind of things we like to help. So your virtualization goals, standardize, simplify, automate, and that's what will enable you to, to meet your agency initiatives. Real quick about dynamic, just to be selfish for just a moment, we do have an IT Schedule 70, and a lot of folks, you know this already, you're purchasing from us now. Uh, there's our CAGE code and our DUNS number. Feel free to reach out to us. We are a small business, and we love to do work with um, with whatever agency is, is out there. We've got a bunch of them right now. So real quick, the biggest difference is with us is, is that we're vendor agnostic. And I, and I love Bernie, and we do a lot of work together. But I'm, I'm not going to tell you that Bernie's the best thing for everything, because he's not. But that's OK, because we get along just the same. And the, our objective for you is to maximize your cost savings, reduce your time constraints and the pieces that you're there, give, giving you better resources and allocation. One of the biggest things for us is, is the quality piece. And I know, you know everybody talks about quality. You have McDonald's talking about quality, and you have Nordstrom's talking about quality. Everybody's talking about quality. The biggest thing that I can say about making sure that you're dealing with a quality company is ISO certification. We've done it. It is not easy. And we recommend that you take a look for folks that are already ISO certified. And this enables you to know that you already have somebody that has internal processes to be able to fix things when things go wrong. It's not when things are going right that you need great quality control. It's when things aren't going right and the ability to be able to correct problems. So that that's, uh, we highly recommend that you look for those. Any questions that you have out there, and if you go down on your right-hand uh, corner, you'll see questions, or, or on the right-hand side, you'll see the ability to chat and have questions. But we do have a couple questions here, Bernie, um, and I think this is good for you. How are virtual routers priced? Uh, <clears throat> they're, they're priced by uh, instance, and uh, we, we sell a subscription license, uh, one, three, or five years of support funnel bin. They either come as uh, regular regular business hours support or 24-7. We also have a, uh, uh, a test dev license, which is lower cost for a, than a production license. And uh, in the cloud service arena, we also do uh, uh, service provider licensing uh, with the cloud vendor itself, or if an agency were going to stand up a private cloud, uh, that may be something that they want to consider. It just depends on how they do their chargeback. <clears throat> okay. So, and you can help them if they price that out and give them budgetary quotes too, right? Absolutely. Uh, we do that all the time. We uh, we provide the end users budgetary quotes that they can then use for their uh, their uh, PR request uh, going forward, and then uh, we sh we we do use a channel model. Uh, we've done some direct, but mostly we go through the channel. So uh, they would be getting you know uh, the contracting procurement side of the house would be getting a quote from Dynamic Computer Corporation. Certainly. So you can reach out to us, and we'll connect you with that. And and uh, I've, I have a couple of different folks asking for sample scopes of work. In order to do sample scopes of work, we really need to talk a little bit more. So please reach out to us. Reach out to me. We'll give you some contact information for us in just a minute. We'll do that. Um, how long does it take to provision? How long does it take to provision? Well, once so so once we. Uh, once we obtain an order, uh, the customer and user gets an email, which gives them the uh, credentials to do a download. And if it's a virtual environment, they select the uh, virtual, the Viata uh, software uh, applicable to their hypervisor, uh, Zen K K KVM Hyper-V VMware, and they download that version. So they essentially 
instantiation of uh, of uh, a virtual router is is minutes. Uh, you know, it's just a download of software. Uh, to provision it and uh, configure it and install it that's unique to their environment, uh, that might take uh, at most a couple of days. Excellent. Once, once they've downloaded and instantiated in, uh, in the hypervisor world. Yeah. All right. Uh, will the presentation be available? Uh, yes, it will. It'll be, we'll, we'll send out a copy of the PowerPoint as well as we'll have a link to a video of the, the whole presentation. Um, are there any constraints to using virtualized routers? That's kind of broad. Let me see. That's kind of broad. Let me see. Can we take that for taking for Oh uh, yeah. The, 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 well, as we were alluding to, if you have uh, certain system throughput requirements for, uh, say, very uh, high volume data. Uh, not, not that we uh, don't do high volume. We, we certainly do. We do uh, some very, very high volumes. Uh, but there's certain applications. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> Viata is part of Brocade. We were acquired in 2012, and the Brocade uh, community. In that community, we work with some intelligence customers who uh, who do some very intense. Uh, compute and data throughput intense applications and they tend to be specific hardware configurations aligned to meeting those requirements and that community uh, to save cost footprint uh, space and also to uh, be able to uh, stand up a mission and, t and tear down that mission when it's ended and reuse that that same infrastructure they want to go to virtualization because it reduces the footprint. Uh, it consolidates a, a lot of uh, uh, physical servers where they can get a higher optimal utilization of the investment. In other words, uh, I can run two or three applications on these servers at the same time where I might have individual instantiated servers running those applications separately. And when they're not running, they're sitting there idle, so they're not being utilized. So uh, the virtualization concept really helps out. Now, the problem is uh, they have uh, 10 gig uh, kinds of throughput requirements, and our router can sustain that, but the hypervisor can't. So you've got the additional layer of the hypervisor as a bottleneck, and until we work through the, the dynamics te technologically of making that more transparent and more uh, throughput efficient, uh, we're limited in what, uh, what amount of volume of data and computational intensity we can support today. So that's one example uh, of a constraint. Uh, the other constraint uh, can be we're not a router that fits at all layers uh, where routers operate, but we do uh, operate very well in the data center. Uh, network edge, uh, an example is uh, one customer had a physical implementation of a network edge solution with 41U rack, which is it's a lot of space. Uh, the integrator took it down to uh, virtualized environment where it was to you and obviously the customer found found one ex the, the, the virtualized uh, that did all the same functions as that 41u rack they certainly found that acceptable whereas the 41u rack solution was not because they didn't have physical space to house it and that's really what what this is all about is taking and the whole reason why everybody is 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 pushing towards this if it's all at all possible is because you can go and save that kind of space requirements and you have all the uh, the energy requirements and the support requirements behind that so uh, real quick I know that we're uh, we're off we're over by a little bit so I want to reel this back in uh, absolutely thanks so much for joining us uh, Bernie thank you for joining me and uh, and helping folks understand at least at a high level what's happening there here's some of our contact information you can reach me at uh, at at, uh, at this this email these these phone numbers there's Bernie's information 
general uh, information for um, for dynamic. Uh, they're ba based up in Michigan. I'm I'm actually just outside D.C., so I'm down in D.C. all the time. So if you're local to D.C., love to be able to talk with you if you have anything specific that you need in a virtual environment. And we're going to be sending you links to all of the, the pieces that we've, that we've talked about. And, then, and there's another uh, one that you just sent me, Bernie, about it's not a, an initiative or it's not a, a full-blown mandate, but there's some recommendations for using, um, is it open, open source, is that what you said? Open standards. Open standards. Uh, it's, 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 Yep, it's open standards-based solutions versus just right. proprietary solutions. Yeah, versus proprietary. So they're, we're starting to get, we're, they're starting to lean towards the open standards as opposed to uh, the proprietary. Obviously, you can't drive that completely that way because there's certain things that have to be proprietary, but not not when you get into a commoditized IT space, and that's that's really what they're after. Again, here's our contact information. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Any additional questions, feel free to, to shoot me an email, shoot Bernie an email. We'll be glad to help you any way we can. Again, thanks so much for joining us. We'll, get, we'll have another procurement briefing for too long, and we'll keep you posted on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.